Al, I'm Mark Roberts, and now welcome to Christmas in July. We have two different computers and screens going, and they have two different levels of time. We're going to do a fast, fun Christmas in July show, and I'm going to do some uh, housekeeping, I'm going to call it, first up front and kind of give you some announcements and things. So to start out, Christmas in July, thanks Terry, she's the one who pushed on this, we're going to do some special pricing today. I think you know that from the emails we sent out. But we're going to be doing a 20% off code and a 25% off code. That's today only. It's on the Mark Roberts Marketplace only. So Brian's going to put up on the screen what, the, uh, what your computer will look like. And I'm going to tell you, there's going to be two different uh, discount codes that you can put in. One is called X Xmas in July 20. The other one is Xmas in July 25. One gives 20% off, one gives 25% off. Here's how it's going to work. I think you can cut and paste that also on there. So this will be easy to do. And 20% is on all the limited edition collectibles, the dolls, Santas, fairies, elves that we're showing today. It's just the items we're showing today. Not everything on the marketplace, just these special pieces we're showing today. Same thing with the ornaments that we're showing today. Those are going to be 25% off plus those, my favorite, those boxwood topiaries. Since John put them in on the show, so we had to put them on the discount. So, uh, and we have another last minute edition that we added at the last minute, so you'll see that shortly. But the coupon codes, uh, Brian, do we switch it? Or you've already got the second place where it will show the discount when you apply it on there. So pretty easy to do. You either cut and paste or you type in Xmas in July 20, Xmas in July 25. There may be a space between July and 20 or July and 25. I don't know that answer, so we'll figure that out. And it'll apply to all the items that we're showing today on your order when you complete it. So don't forget that. And I know people have been shopping early, and this is going to be more like a Shop HQ show or an Evine show that I used to do because we're going to run through the items fast. And this is one where I said get your pencil and paper and write the item numbers down or the description so you can search them, so you can watch the show and then place your orders when you want to place your orders. So I think let's get started. One last thing on the higher ticket items, Klarna, remember Klarna when you check out because you can get four separate payments over two months at, with no interest charged. That's a minimum of 200 and a maximum of 1500. So if you want to take advantage of that, that's great. We see on the screen right now that rotating tapestry Santa. What a absolutely gorgeous Santa. And while you're looking at the, his back right now, it's going to come back around. But that tapestry fabric, what his name was. When we were shopping for fabrics about 18 months ago in a fabric uh, mill, Jong and I were, we came across some tapestries like this and fell in love with them. We said, wow, these are gorgeous. And so choosing them was a challenge. And we ended up settling on this one as our primary one. So let me get over here and I'm going to bring my papers with me today. But how detailed and magical is this? And colors, lavender velvet, this lavender ornament that is separate, but you can still get him. He's separate. He's part of the King's Jewels, which we'll get to. Exquisite detail on this tapestry Santa, all the jeweling that goes on on the back of his cape. On the inner cape, all the details in the jeweling. His pants, his pleated copper pants with the gold glitters, the detail coming down the front. This guy is just magical. I'm going to actually pick him up in a second. Wait a minute, I can just stop the rotator in a second and do that so we can see the front of him a little bit better. I don't know that there's very many of these left, but look at his French beret style hat with the tassel. This detail that comes down the front is multi-layered. There's lace, enamel, flowers, pearls. I mean, there's like a lot going on on here. He's fluffed out really exquisitely. Just a great, great piece. We added to his hand for the show, and then this lavender, what we call the king's jewel ornament, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. Magical piece. So I want to give you an, a, an idea concept-wise on these larger iconic pieces. The normal uh, manufacturer suggested price or retail price is like five, around $525. Today, it's under $420. It's $419.95. So get that on the marketplace if you love it and you need some iconic pieces. And we're going to have about five or six really big iconic special pieces. So write the item number down. You can decide a little later. 
but don't wait too long because most of these pieces are going to be gone today. Tapestry Santa, magical and wonderful. Next thing I want to show you, and I'm just going to tease you right now, if you saw the Facebook post, you're going to know there's more, but there's even more now today. But these boxwood topiaries, you know there's like three or four different styles on them. You're going to see them dressed up really magically. So I have this at home, this exact one. I actually have three of the styles and I have them in pairs. And they look wonderful in a very timeless, elegant way. Uh, a one set of them I have replanted in some gorgeous porcelain urns. The other ones are just exactly in the urns as they come. But they're really great pieces. They're clean. They're uh, formed and very functional. Uh, really great, great pieces. So we're going to see more of these topiaries shortly, and you're going to see them decorated. And you're going to go, wow. So what I like to do when we talk about these things is, especially a lot of this stuff, you know, it's a big investment. Like the, the topiary that we are looking at now is around $335 retail. It's 42 inches tall. It's very substantial. I had them custom made size wise. So one of some big scale pieces. Today it's around 250. So it's about a $85 savings, which is great uh, that you can get those. You can thank Jong for that because he wanted to use them in the display. They were not part of the show, but he wanted to use them in the display. And when you see what he came up with, they are magical. So next thing we're going to move on to are the King's Jewel ball ornaments. And can I just move her over? Can we see that in there? Can we get in tight? John, by the way, is doing the camera today. John is off. John, we miss you if you're watching. And, so, and we're doing things a little bit differently, but great. So we're getting the gorgeous box with the, of course, that nice Mark Roberts logo. And come on out of there. It's in a styrofoam mold. We put it in upside down. But is this just magical or what? This is a five inch ball great in this kind of soft mint color all of this pave detailing this is like a jeweler had done these these are just exquisite look how big that is in my hand it's like a grapefruit practically and then all of this beautiful detail i mean this is beyond exquisite it has what i call a diamond necklace around the top of the cap which is nice um, it does have the mark roberts tag on it and they're numbered that's cool and there's sign now that's a fact that's a facsimile of my signature. This is what happens when I say signed. She fainted. This girl nearly fainted when she realized that the ornament was signed, but she's not. So I think she's just jealous, but you know, I'll keep her happy. So we're on live TV, so we gotta do what we gotta do. Great, great piece. There's three more I'm gonna show you in this. This green one is the King's, it's the green King's Jewel ornament. I'm gonna just call them by colors. But this is normally about $95 and it's around 71 today. These are great classic collector pieces. There is a beautiful, beautiful lavender one. I'm looking for it because it's in the tree here. Can I go to the tree here now? Look how gorgeous that is and how pretty that is next to the green there. We've got gorgeous colors on this tree. What, when we pull back in a minute, we'll look at the ornament first, but when we pull back in a minute, we're going to look at all the florals on this tree. And remember earlier, all the earlier shows how I've talked about the florals, how we can use them throughout the year. Well, we're going to use them on this tree. We have used them on this tree. And what a gorgeous, again, detailing the lavender base color on here, then the jeweling. There's all sorts of millinery flowers, but we've added pearls and other details to them. We just kind of keep adding and layering. She, this one, again, has a, this one has a pearl necklace on the top there. There we go. We can see that. Uh, just a great, great piece. And then that's the same piece that is on Santa's hand, which we saw a few minutes ago. So that is the, what color do we call that one? We don't have a color. Great. It's the pink or lavenderish one. You guys are good with color. Tapestry pink. Tapestry pink. Okay. Then I'm going to show you this largest scale of these jeweled, King's Jewel ornaments. And this one, it's called green also, so it's a green color. There it is there. Look at the shape on this one, just magnificent. Let me move this out of the way, Let's see if I can. Just magnificent, the detailing that is on here, and it just kind of rolls around all the movement, the laces, the flowers that are put on here. This is all done one at a time, piece by piece, and we just are you know, picking things out, and you know, John can draw, like as good as Da Vinci 
And so he really does a lot of beautiful movement. Um, I'm going to use the word Rococo because we're going to come back to that twice today. But in a kind of a Rococo style of doing that. And then the sister to this ornament is in the pink right here. And very soft and subtle. You get the pearling and the millinery flowers with the beads and the jewels on it. And then this is what I love is this gorgeous jeweling that comes in here. And it just kind of scrolls around. You've got a fuchsia, copper, diamond color. I mean, there's just so much exquisite pieces on here. They all have the uh, necklace of some sort, a pearl or diamond necklace on the top, different beads. Great, great, iconic, large scale pieces. These are five and eight inches in size. A typical ornament is three or four inches in size. Here is a four inch ornament versus this eight inch ornament. So we can see, I can tuck it down a little bit. There we go. We can see even a little bit higher, John. Yeah, there we go. And see the size of the ornaments. I mean, it's almost double the size. And while this is all glittered and wonderful and it's beautiful, this one here has all this texture and all this gorgeous layering and detailing, paveing like a jeweler would do. And that's the, the, the skill of it. So you've got four of those King's Jewels ornaments that you can get today at some special pricing. And while we're looking at this other dangling bauble right now, let's just go ahead and jump right to that in a minute. We're going to jump to another one first. Sorry. We're going we're to stick to order. And we're going to talk about the peacock jewel fairy that is up top. And there she is magically up there. Look at that happy face. I mean, she is happy as can be and really, really pretty. She's holding a peacock ornament, which is also available today. So what I'm going to do is, you know what? She's looking wonderful right there, so we're just going to leave it right there like that. But what she has, she's got this great, if you look at her legs, you can see the detail. She's got a uh, blue and silver and gold or copper uh, metallic threads in her legs here. And it just really dances. It's really, really magical when you see that in there. And her dress just ruffles out. She's got these gorgeous deep blue, blue sequins over here and glitter. I mean, there's just a lot to be happy about with her, a lot. And I love the turquoise colors in her hat up here. It's just a lot going on with her. She's got, she's got a great diamond necklace there. And then we've got a little one up here too. So she's right there she is. There she is, cool. And she's holding a peacock ornament too, which I'm going to show you in a second. We'll just hold on to that for a sec. And so you've got the two peacock jewel fairies. And then we have some peacock ornaments. And this is an assortment of two or a set of two. Look how wonderful this is. And there are two sizes. And then we're going to go up and look at the big ornament in a second. What I like about the two ornaments is the scale that you see with them with the fairies. So the larger fairy has this slightly larger ornament. They're both still big, but you can see it's slightly larger. I like the scale of the fairy holding a larger size ornament because they're magical. The fairies have magical powers. Come on, let's all be honest about this. A and they can carry a lot more weight than we can, especially for their scale. And then the little girl has one, this one here, which is almost as big as her. But that's the magic of the North Pole. And it looks wonderful on the tree. It creates dimension, creates a story that they're helping you decorate the tree. And that's what I love is creating stories on our trees and in our decorating. So you've got this beautiful ornament. It's called the Peacock finial ornament, set of two, and those are they're like $25, $26 normally. It's under, it's about $19 now today, so for the set of two. Great pieces. I think when you get some of these ornaments, because you're getting the special pricing, consider the quantities that you want to get on those. It's because they're not going to be available on a lot of them. This may be it afterwards. So get the quantities you want. I like to have more than less, but get whatever you want, okay? While we're talking ornaments, I'm going to then talk about this beautiful pink one, which is here. These two got pretty. This is a set of two. They are the ball and the finial, the, the, the frosted, almost like frost, frosted pink, 
with the beads and the glitters and the diamonds and the mirrored reflection. Just great little set of two of those. These are like, wow, they're normally like $19 for a set of two and they're like $14 for a set of two now. So that's cool. So we're getting some good deals on some of this stuff. That's what Christmas in July is about, is getting good deals. Pink is a great accent color to do with, I'm going to show you in a couple different pieces, how adding a little bit of pink adds a great little accent. And you can see that with this beautiful tree that we're going we're gonna to pull out on it in a minute. But how sweet is this with the joyful North Pole elf, this girl right here? How happy is she? I mean, she is very happy. Look at her here. Wow. She's wonderful. Here she is in the uh, cabinet looking at saying, hey, look at me. Zhang added this jeweled Santa, which is not part of today's collection, but how gorgeous is that? He added that to her. And those are available, I think, on the marketplace also. You can hunt those out. It's not part of today's uh, promotionals, though. Love her with the, that she can stand. And she'll hold the ornament. How sweet is that? How sweet is that? Really cool. Again, the colors look great. The, the pink looks great with her, and it doesn't look, it's pink and blue, but it doesn't look like baby. It's just, it's subtle colors, sparkling colors, lots of great detail. She comes in two sizes, and the other size is going to be on the tree coming out. We'll see that. We're going to pull out for the tree and see the whole tree in a minute now, and I think you saw it in the beginning. Notice all those gorgeous flowers. We've been showing you the flowers for many shows now, and I promised you that you'd know how to use them, and you, we'd show you how to use them. But how magical is it to add some silk flowers to your trees? Just makes them really, really special. So let's pull back on the tree and just kind of absorb it and look how beautiful that tree is. The gorgeousness, the flocked tree, all the different colors, and just the, really the magical element of that tree. I mean, that is just really exquisite, to say the least. Very, very, very pretty. We've gotten a lot of compliments on the tree from Facebook posts already, and I think a few people, retailers, called and said, can I buy that? So, no, sorry. It's, we need it. Okay, so we're going to move over to the fireplace mantle now. So behind me is, we're going to talk about, I'm going to get over here, the Santa's old-fashioned phonograph. What a great magical piece. If you follow on some of the Facebook fan pages, I believe it was Henry, Henry Armani from Singapore, if I'm correct, who got this recently and spent a lot of time fluffing it out really detailed. He did, he did a, Henry, if you're watching or if you will be watching, you did a great job fluffing that out. I noticed it. I thought you did a great job with it. What, when you get these, you know, there's lots of parts of them that are wired, so you can shape them. The arms, of course, are poseable. Same with the hat and the head. You can turn the head and do different things with it. They're poseable. They're meant to be posed and moved around. Really cool, this vintage piece, because it's got the very old-fashioned phonograph. This is metal. Comes with this sweet little elf, and he's got little magnets on his feet, so he kind of just stands by magnetizing it there. So it's the Santa, the elf, the old-fashioned phonograph. And just to talk about price so we know what we're talking about, this is, uh, this is another iconic piece. So this is almost a $700 retail piece. This is like $690-ish. Today, it's $553. So again, if you want an iconic piece, this is really a one-day thing, Christmas in July. And it's, you're going to be happy with it if you get this piece. We've seen two big iconic pieces. Remember Klarna? When you check out, it's already there for you. It's an option. Again, $200 to $1,500. And remember to use that, Chris, write that down. Cool, Christmas in July 20. Thank you, Brian. Great, great piece. Now, something else that I think we all have, and that is a fairy godmother, okay? And she's right over my shoulder right now. And is she just whimsical, magical, and just special? She's got those big, giant, butterfly-like wings that are just so magnificent. They're large. She's got all this magnificent detailing and this like uh, iridescent sheer, and it's all been seamed and edged together so nicely. This other sheer's got sparkles and stars. What's wonderful about her is this gorgeous green satin. This is really elegant with this um, sequined velvet. 
and then such detail on here that is just, just exquisite. She has also this great detailing of this fine beading and jeweling. When I finish with this, John, please let me, don't let me forget, I want to go back to the Santa because I forgot to show that. But she has got, she's got his magic wand, she's got a great hat with this great movement going on above her head, the, the tail of her hat that's flowing about. She's got gorgeous, she's got gorgeous everything. So she's a wonderful piece. Brian, do you put up there on the price there what they are? So they're, oh, I see. You only, you, so it's $3.55, but it's $2.84 when you get it, when you do the checkout today. So really great value. Great, great piece. This is today only, so let's remember that. Write them down. Love her. I love her green, green tights and leggings and how her legs are wrapped at the bottom. I mean, it's just really exquisite, really exquisite detailing. Check that out. I mean, that is just the best. Do we all have a, have a fairy godmother? Do we have one in our home is the question. We're going to look at Santa for just a second because I want to come back to, are we able to see this, John? Because I really didn't show this here, and I should have. What comes down the chest of Santa on his shirt is a millinery embroidered flowers that are in gold with some other flowers, fabric flowers, some metal flowers, some enamel flowers. And this, very dainty, but I love this little tassel-like trimming that we added on here. And this is very dainty little diamond-like beads and gold-like balls or chain that comes down to a pearl and diamond-like base down there. Just magical piece. So this is a great, great piece. I think like so many of the Mark Roberts pieces, when you get them, you just discover more and more details on them all the time. And part of that is, well, uh, not part of that, all of that is, is because when we do them, um, Renee, Jong, and I, and we're putting the details together, we often come behind each other and say, hey, let's add this to this. What do you think of this? How does this look? Can we add this to it? And we're able to do some layering and some, you know, we find wonderful things that go with them. And so we, we're not hard set on we have to have this many pieces on it and that's it. We just make them till they're gorgeous. That's all. It's just, just make them gorgeous. And so that's a fun job, to say the least. Okay, so right now, one of my favorites of the show, the highlights, is ta-da. I love this topiary. John, can we do a pullback first? Is this magical? And then we'll come into the details. Because John took gold ribbon and just crisscrossed it on there. There's actually a wire sticking out right here. And you can fold that back or cut it off later. But very simply, just wrap the wires around, or the, the ribbon around, and poked a hole through the ribbon for the ribbon to stay. Why couldn't you put a little berry, taking some of my parts, take a little berry, one of these, off. I'll do it myself. Pop it off, stick it right over the bead there, done, ta-da. And you finish the detailing on it, and it looks even more rich. So, but very easy to do. This was not hard. The hard part, Zhang did for us already. He came up with the concept of it. And it's, he took a topiary, which is very structured and very formal, and he built upon that by putting the crisscross lines in a very structured and formal way. So he's continued that look really, really well in a very elegant way. But the fun part is about to start. We've got these great glass, beaded ornaments. I don't even know what we call them. We call them baubles or iridescent something. But we made, Jong said, make them like a, what do you call it, a swag or a, what do you call it? A shawl. And I, I said, what are you talking about? So I'm going to show you right now because I'm just going to put it around my neck. So there's your visual, is the shawl. Don't anybody take this picture and send it out. Okay, the concept, and that's why I want to do the visual for you so you get the concept of it. But watch what I'm going to do with this nail on this topiary. He's already done it up here. But I'm taking this shawl that we're going to call of the ornaments, I take this off for a second, wrap it around. This is not hard at all. Just lay them in there, put this back in, and you can, you can glue these in if you want to later, or you can just lay them in. Put this in. Guess what? We're going to add a fairy. We put a little bit of wire around him. This is like very simple. 
tuck this in, wrap it around, and hang on there, dude. And then I'm going to put the other piece back up here and tuck it in. Magic. I'm not done yet. I'm going to take another one of these shawls, as we call them. Where is it at? There it is. And I'm going to actually take, you know what? We broke one. We broke one, and, and these things happen. You know what? You, you break stuff making a tree. You break stuff decorating. These, these things happen. So we just said, you know what? Let's make a set of a cluster of three, which was perfect anyways. We needed to do that. So there was a reason for that. And, you know, you tuck the other one in here, a set of three, like so, and let that be magically hanging in there. How wonderful was that? And then maybe we add some of these, I'm trying to capture the camera, these black and white uh, relief style ornaments that capture the magic of the top of the tree, of this topiary, which John is going to show us in a second. And I'm going to show you a trick, what he did with it. I was like surprised. And it's so simple. We're going to look at the top of the tree first. Cool. Or the topiary. I'm sorry. So he took this. Good. Good enough. He took this, popped the cap off, pulled the cap off, did that. Now I'm going up to the top of the tree, stuck a stick into the tree. Oh, my legs, I'm getting the cramp. <laughs> and then drop that in. How easy is that? It's, I'm always, uh, Lori Acton, if you're watching, I know you're going, oh my God, because Lori Acton has helped us set up from the, in the trade shows before. And she always remarks to me how incredibly talented Jong is. So we talk about black and white, how, how uh, versatile this is. Jong, I hope you're not going to kill me, but we're going to go over to the other Christmas tree. I'm going to take both of these wonderful things. These are on today's Marketplace. They're the Brian's showing you on the side of the screen, so you see them. I'm going to walk over to the beautiful floral tree, which I lost my breath on. And how gorgeous is this on this tree? It works beautifully. It's timeless. The same with the. I'm just going to come over here and do it over here. And get it all in one one shot. How easy is this to do? And look, whoop, do do do, and you got a pair of them. Wonderful. How magical is that in the tree? The iridescent, how it just jumps, and the black and white, the timelessness of it, and how it just adds to the tree. And I love the big scale. It adds to it. So easy to do. I'm going to go back over to the fireplace now. Easy to do when you have a great basis of things to decorate with. And it allows you to do them in different ways all the time. So what a magical piece. I almost forgot the coal stocking fairy. So we put this guy here for a reason. Because where do we hang our stockings at Christmas? On the mantle. What is the coal stocking fairy about? Well, he's about, for the people who are naughty, which is a couple of us in this group, maybe more, that have been naughty. And the naughty ones, we get coal in our stocking. I don't know about you guys, but I can open up a whole electric company, except I'd pollute the air. So I use my coal for other reasons. And these guys have, if we can zoom right into his little belt here, this is real coal. This is actually real coal that's on his belt, and it's also on his hat. It's a lump of coal. Now, what's different about it, it's a Mark Roberts lump of coal. So yes, we added glitter to it. That's, I guess we add glitter to everything. But what a great piece. He's got his little uh, feathered pen in his hands. He's got, I guess he's making a list for Santa who gets coal. But what a great, great piece to have today and to get this opportunity with it. Lots of great details. On his hat, I'm going to tell you the sweet little story. You know, the coal, there's a real piece of coal here, and there's a, I'm going to call this an artificial diamond, a faux diamond. But where do real diamonds come from? They come from coal. They come from ultra-compressed coal. And so I love the analogy that from something dirty and dark and, you know, polluting and all that stuff, can come something stunningly beautiful, a diamond. They come from the same thing. They're made from the same thing. They're made from the same thing. So that's the magic. There's also a, like a storyline behind this coal stocking fairy. And it's just a great piece. I like to have that. I use that as a teaching opportunity for the little ones to say that, you know, no matter what, good things can come from anything. So remember that. And you can tell the story of the coal, how it becomes a diamond under great intense pressure. 
So the great intense pressure is from mom and dad, basically. Um, maybe not quite as much, but you guys get the you guys get the drift on that. So the other item, Brian, did we show the um, the relief ornaments? <coughs> so we'll show those up next, which we were showing before. They're on the side of the screen there now. And these pieces, which we used, I was going to tuck in here. Really didn't get the chance to. The purpose of that is we've got that gorgeous black and white ornament, or the finial at the top, which is, we're good. We've got that gorgeous black and white finial at the top, and how nice it brings the black down into the topiary that we're decorating. So I could be tucking these in here in different ways. I'm not going to right now because I don't have all, I don't, my hands aren't free and I only have a minute. So I'm just going to kind of lay them here as magic. These come as a pair. They're relief ornaments because there's lots of texture or relief um, on them. Speaking of relief, get my bottle of water and get a drink of water. Okay, we are going to now go on to number 10, this grouping here. So we have these numbered out for you guys. Brian, when do we do the um, uh, bobble ornaments at? Coming up. It's coming up? Okay, great. So right next, we're going to talk about the next topiary, which Zhang did. He did these consistent because we like to do them in pairs, so the same style look. But we've added the court jester fairy to him. What's neat about that is, and we pull things together, we didn't plan this all this way. I swear to God we didn't. We just pulled different products and said, what do we have, can we offer? How perfect is this? This is called the King's Fleur ornament, because it's got a fleur design. How perfect is that design-wise with this? So how magical would this be if you put it as a shawl, remember shawl, lady shawl, and had it coming across in here. How wonderful is that? How magical is that together? So you've got some great ornaments that go here. You can easily just tuck them into their hands as well and add to them. So when you do an ornament on their hand that's larger on the, lar on the small one, I like to do a little trick, and I'm going to ask Jong in a minute to, sh to zoom in on my hands down below so I can show you what I do with that. And what I'll do is, here we go, he's coming. To hang it on a small ornament, I take the loop and I do a second tie on it. And what that does is it creates a little hanger lower right by the hook. And sometimes I'll just double it up so that it's cleaner looking, or you can just cut that off at the top either way. But then we're going to go up here. Then I can tuck it in his hand, and it's close to his body. So it, it, it's not hanging way down. Again, this guy's little, but he's mighty. That's the magic of the North Pole. That's the magic of the Mark Roberts fairies. You can put these larger scale pieces in their hands and have fun with the scale. You don't need to put a little dainty little ornament. You can put a big piece in his hand sometimes. He's helping decorate this topiary. And while you and I know that Jong is who made this one magical, your guests can just think that this guy did. That's okay. You're good. So, court jester fairy and the king's fleur ornaments. And of course, these gorgeous boxwood topiaries. The, all the ones we're showing you today, I have at my home. I have three different styles, and I have them in pairs, and I'm very, very happy with all of them. So let's go to the mailbox now. Brian is showing you right now these uh, beaded, these ornaments. And Brian, when do you want to put that up on the screen, and then I'll show him the box? It's on the screen, too? It's coming. We can do it after that. All right, so here they are. So, John, can we get this for a second? A little bit more. Let's see, I'll go this way. There they are. Twelve of these ornaments in a box. So they're like, I think like $56.95 a box, less 25%. These are great pieces. These are last minute additions that we just added to the show. So you saw them above the fireplace mantle. You're going to see them. You saw them, like I've used them everywhere. They're my shawl. Don't tell anybody. But here's how they come. I just wanted to show you that. Then we're going to go back to Santa, the mailbox, the mail call. Love this guy because he is the magical, whimsical part of what we love in Christmas. 
You've got the whole ensemble there. You've got the trees, the mailbox, the presents, Santa. But the best part is coming up, and John's going to zoom in on it. In the mailbox, delivering mail to Santa is a squirrel. Is that just too cute? He's got the little, little uh, letter in his mouth, and he's holding it for Santa to say, here, here's, here's some mail for you from some good little boy or good little girl in Texas or Florida or Oklahoma or California or Pennsylvania. Love that part of it. Tassels on the mailbox, lots of great details. This is a burgundy velvet fabric with oh, just gorgeous detail. You look at the, on his shoulders, great fabric on his shirt. Uh, this is just an exquisite detail. I mean, this is just an incredible piece. This has the lamb's wool beard, which is wonderful. You're just seeing so much detail and so much magic on this. Great, great piece. And I guess I should tell you that be around 525, but when you check out, it'll be like 419. So what a great, great piece. All right, we got to move on because I said we're going to be fast and we're tight. I told you I was in Atlanta and Dallas for trade shows this year. Atlanta, they wiped us out of under the sea, coastal, jewels of the sea, whatever we want to call it. Dallas bought some of that also, but my hair is a mess, my goodness. Dallas bought a lot of that also, but in Atlanta, that southeast by the Florida and the Carolinas and the coast, really loved that stuff. We have, we reserved a few pieces for you. The seahorses, pair of seahorses and a pair of starfish. Greens and blues, really cool. There we go. There we go. Greens and blues. And the jeweling that goes on there. There's pearls and all that other stuff. Really great pieces. Just, you know, you're going to get a pair of each of these. You're going to want to get, in most cases, more of them because look at this beautiful. John just took a triple, triple table, which I was just noticing this. You painted it white. I love this. This is great. This is new. Did you, is this ours, or did you pick this up somewhere? He's laughing at me. I guess he picked it up somewhere. John goes shopping, and he just finds stuff, and he's like, oh, just buys it. It's like, it was really wonderful. So we added these great baubles to it. That's good. You're good there. We added these great iridescent baubles because they represent like bubbles, like air bubbles under the sea. Great colors. It's just fun stuff. So if you and like anything coastal, perfect for a bathroom, bathtub. It's a great accent, something to do, a different theme in there. Somebody told me years ago that a powder room or bathroom is a great place to do something a little daring and a little bit unexpected because it's a small space and you can have fun with it and it can be totally different than your decor in your house and it will be kind of exciting. You know, we all get to go to the bathroom sometime and it's kind of exciting when, some, when a guest or a family member comes and like, oh wow, this is cool, this is so different and everything. So I love this kind of concept for the bathrooms or the bathtubs or something. Very, very fun pieces. Okay, we are, I see my time is getting tight already. We're going to the kitchen now. We're going to talk about Santa, Christmas Kitchen Santa. This is a very iconic piece that goes back many years to about 2003 or 2004. And this is not that piece. This is a, this is a subsequent piece that's, you know, a... a many generations later piece. But I want to say back around 2003, 2004, 2002, maybe, probably 2003, you know, we're, we're concepting out these different Santas and things, and John is sketching them as he's going along as we're talking, and he sketches very fast and very detailed. And we were talking about what we wanted to do with them, and so we, this is the general concept that we've evolved each year. But Santa's at a kitchen island, and he's cooking, he's baking cookies, you know, it's that fun time of year. This version has these great cups and saucers with the stripes, these candy jars with all the, you know, there's real, can or there's artificial candies inside, excuse me, they're real glass jars. Lots of little details underneath, this gorgeous detailed island. Santa is just like stunning, really amazing. Multi-layered, all sorts of jewels and beads and candies, there's peppermints and chocolates and gumdrops and gingerbread cookies and I'm hungry right now. It sounds great, looks great, and just so many pretty details on here. There's a tassel on the side. I mean, when you start to see the side of his coat, I'm not sure how much I can show you without creating a sort of chaos. My glasses are not connected to the ornaments above. I'm just going to spin this thing around. If my glasses fall off, they fall off. Look at the detailing on here. I mean, this is just exquisite and magical. 
you know, and it, and it just culminates at the shoulder there. There's a thread there that needs to be cut off. But it just culminates at the shoulder with this big, magnificent tassel that lays down there with the, the velvet and this gorgeous green satin that just complements the metallic satin that is of his shirt. I mean, just a great piece. He's got his Santa, or Santa, his baker's cap on. I mean, this guy is just magical. Great, great piece. Another iconic piece. Again, this is going to be, you know, it normally is around $700 price range. It's in the $500 price range. You want those iconic pieces, today's the day to get them. For the four payments. Next, I am going to go to the North Pole Toymaker Elf. And we're going to show about four or five different elves here, real quickly. The Toymaker Elf is this guy right here with the blue striped legs. So cool. He's got a nutcracker on his chest, on his belt, basically. Um, I love the blue on there. We're gonna, I guess we'll look at this one. We're going to look at the big one. Okay. I love the blue colors here. The, the blue color is pretty much dominant, even with the nutcracker there. And the stripes are really in, in, an integral part of the North Pole Elf collection. They, you'll generally see all of the North Pole Elves have striped legs going this way. I said to you earlier, pink. There's just a little bit of pink right here, right here. And that pink, it's almost hard to see how, how it's just a really subtle pink. And it jumps against the red and it complements the blue. And it just is a very subtle accent. And that's all the pink we have in this piece. It's just not a lot. It doesn't dominate it at all. It's primarily red and blue is what his cl clothes are. Just magical. The North Pole Elves can stand and sit. We're using them. This is the toy maker elf, and we're using them. And then the bell ringer elf, which Renee's going to give me in a sec, is they're both also up above. Thank you. They're up above, and you can see how Chong has them working the ribbons on the, uh, the hood of the stove, working the ribbons and the bows of the wreath, and they're working together, creates movement, creates that storyline. And when people come over and say, wow, who does your decorating? You say, well, the, the North Pole elves do. These guys do. They're my decorators. They do it at night mostly. But how magical is that? How that brings these things together. And just a little bit of ribbon. And this is simple ribbon. Uh, you can pick that up pretty much anywhere. Then the little guy, the little bell ringer elf with the green stripes on his legs, he's nestled in this wreath. And look how pretty the green ornaments work. We've got two different sets of ornaments that we're going to jump to. We've got these green fancy scroll ornaments. And then the candy cane ornaments here. Jong, I think you drew out this, this candy cane design, if I'm correct. He's shaking his head at me, yes, with the ribbons. I'm sure I asked you to put the big ribbons in it, because me, with a florist background, I ask for ribbons in everything. That's, that's what I do. So we love adding the ribbons to things. It's just gorgeous. But great detail in here. Holly, pine, great little pieces. Again, you want to get these. You're probably going to want to get more than one set of these things, but they're fun to add. On the green one, the fancy scroll, I'm going to refer to this again as Rococo for the style, and I'm going to finish that up in a minute. You're going to, I'm going to, I'll, I'll close with that Rococo. There's a reason for that. But great detailing, great green. It's very sharp. It's very tangy, tangy green. And it's so, I'm making, they're making fun of me with that because it slipped my tongue. Tangy green with this red jewels in the center in four different spots on this ornament. Love that. So it goes great with the North Pole Bell Ringer Elf, which is right to his, to the right or left of them. Great, great pieces. Next is, um, looks like we have 13 minutes left and I still have Q&A to do. So, Dreams of Sugar Plum Fairy are next. Actually, it's not. There's one more. This is the North Pole Candy Maker Elf, which is sitting right up here. Can we get that? Yeah, we can. So Jong has them sitting on a bookshelf in our little kitchenette here, kitchen here, which is so sweet. We can't find the large one. Go figure. That happens these days. But what I love on this guy is two things. He's got his tangy green striped leggings. And these ones are going in an angle, so this is an exception. But really, really pretty still. Black and white trim there. Great details. You know how I like to pose them. Jong has them sitting, but you know how I like to do my little famous pose, my lay down pose. I like this because I, what I like is you put him somewhere in the kitchen. This guy's other guy's getting jealous. But you put him in the kitchen. He's kind of just looking down at you there. He's looking down and checking out what's going on. 
So it's sweet on the bookshelf like that, somewhere in the kitchen or up high. Now we're going to go quickly to Dreams of Sugar Plum Fairy, which she's right here on this lamp here. And we and did this because we have the lamp here, but we also did it for a reason. I have at home, I show a lot of my small ones like this as a, as a uh, almost like a tassel to a lamp. So she, she's hanging literally right on one of the parts of the lamp up there. And she just hangs freely there. I can, you can bring her around like that. Or the larger one, how elegant is she? standing next to this here. If they weren't giving me dirty looks, I would pick her up right now, this beautiful fairy, the uh, Dreams of Sugar Plums, and I would walk her over to that gorgeous tree that we saw in the beginning, because she would be, again, perfect for that tree. She's colorful, she's elegant, she's just, look at her with her arms just spread out. She's like, she's like, ta-da, I'm wonderful. She is. She's wonderful and she's magical, and she would look great on that tree. You start with some beautiful stuff, it's easy to do. I love her because she's got lots of different details, lots of different colors, lots of different layers. She is exquisite. All right, so we're gonna close with New Year's, and then we're gonna do some quick Q&A. And I've gone through, I've raced through this as fast as I could, but we've got some Q&A to do. But this is another thing, we're good, that's good right there. This is another thing that Zhang found somewhere, and then he found these, and he glued this all together. It's like, well, this is a great little centerpiece thing. We, where did you get this thing at? And he, said, he got it in different places, parts. You know, so it just worked out. And so it really was just the, the wreath. He put the wreath together, and we're adding, we added some of these great ornaments. We showed you these relief ornaments earlier. I did not show you. All right, Brian's going to do the Happy New Year Fairy, so I'm going to do her first. We're going to tuck in the Happy New Year fairy in here. She is magical. Okay, it's going to, New Year's going to come. So if you want to get a New Year fairy, she's a magical piece. We're just going to tuck her right into this centerpiece. How magical is that in there? And then we tucked in different ornaments. This is a new ornament that we haven't shown yet, which is called the black and white plaid ornament. Really descriptive. Sometimes we don't get that creative. Shows a set of three, but I'm showing it as a set of two, Brian. So um, I guess it's a set of three. Who knew? I, anyways, it's a set of three in there. There it is. There's the third one right here. Da, 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 da. There we go. I can figure this out. So a set of three of these plaid, and how great are these in here, tucked in and around this wreath? How magical are they? We added some of the relief ornaments also, the black and white. So this just works really, really nicely. I'm just going to let this become the crowning top for right now up there because we don't have a candle burning or an LED candle. But you've got the, the Happy New Year fairies in two sizes. You've got these a couple different ornaments in this wreath. I think one of the things that I want to emphasize is everything doesn't have to be uh, store-bought. You know, this wreath, this contraption that Zhong found, God knows where he finds some of this stuff. But, and put it together, the metal part was already there and he just, he, he could see that the the votive holders would fit in there perfectly. So let's just glue, he just glued those on and then just made a wreath or got, grabbed a wreath and tucked it on there. And it's just, I mean, this is great. It's a great centerpiece. So magical, magical, magical. So we went through everything fast. Thank you. We're going to do Q&A now. So I'm going to go back to the main middle table and just do some Q&As. Wasn't there something else here? Oh, you, the other things you took away. Okay, great. So we're going to do some Q&A, question and answer. That thank you, Terry Tipton Catone, because this was her idea again to do some Q&A, and I asked her to organize them for me. And anybody else can still send them in, but Terry helped uh, be the, the clearinghouse for them. So let's clear this out here. I'm going to do some Q&A now, and really I've got about maybe a dozen questions that people ask. So I'm going to go through them relatively quickly. Um, can you please make more cats? We've been getting a lot of questions or a lot of comments on that. Possibly dressed in, guess what color? Blue. Blue is still a strong color. So yes and yes. We've got the spring line done and we've done some for 2023 and we've done some great cats. There's some really magical cats coming. Hold your breath. It'll be a while before they're out, but they will, they will be coming. We're working on 2020, I said 2023, 2022. We're working on 2022 Christmas and fall now, and there will be more cats. So 
the next question. Can you please bring out another traditional colored Christmas burglar cat? I love the cat burglar. First of all, a lot of times people wonder how do we come up with themes and concepts and everything. Sometimes it starts with a name. Almost always it starts with a name. And I love the idea of the cat burglar. But we make it a cat. We make him with jewels. We make him with fun stuff. So yeah, I'm ready to do a new cat burglar. I love that piece. Next question was, what are you working on for Halloween for 2022? I feel like there's a whip out there. How many witches? More elves, please. How about a wizard like the patriotic Santa? Great idea. So the patriotic Santa, if you got that, we did a, I'm going to jump backwards for a minute to spring of 2022. We did a king of the leprechauns that is similar to the patriotic Santa. A wizard, that would be great. I think that we talked about doing wizards before and I think we maybe do it again. How many witches? We always do at least four. Uh, something that nobody knows, and there's going to be that end at the very end also, but I'll give it to you right now. We have all new witch faces coming. We haven't done new witch faces in a while, so we have drawn out some gorgeous new witch faces. We've you know, played around with them. We're going to have a lot of new witch faces that are going to be coming, including African-American witch faces. What else are you working on for Halloween 2022? Pumpkins. Pumpkins are so popular. My goodness, the jeweled, and, and the ones we did this year, and the, you'll see it in the next uh, live show in August, that, you know, really wonderful. You've seen them, I think, before, a lot of you have, but great pieces, and I'm really working on some great concepts for the following year's one. The next one, not a question, but more of a request, and you guys are still talking about Halloween to me right now. Please do more character elves. Uh, Dobby, this is your fault. Um, like an older Dracula, pirate or skeleton, so... Dracula is on the list, actually, or a Dracula-like character. That's already on the list. Skeletons are always on the list, although we didn't do new ones this year. So there's just a few left. So um, how, another question, my goodness. How many new witches can we look forward to for Halloween 2022? And skeletons, and a new Dracula or an elf warlock. So these are really common questions. Um, the witches are pretty much sold out this year. If you find them in a retailer's, get them, because they're gone. They're all, we, we don't have any in the warehouse here. They're gone. Get them while you can, because they've been very, very hot this year. Same thing with the skeletons. They're almost all gone. Okay, what was the first fairy Mark designed? What started it all? That was the gumdrop fairy, and that was in 1997. And I actually meant, when I saw this, the question this morning when I got the list, I meant to dig one out because I'm almost certain we have one here from 1997, and it's very simple and very plain, but it's really, really gorgeous. Um, and so uh, Gumps by Mail put it on their front cover of their catalog in 1997, and it was the best catalog cover they had ever had in their history, um, until we broke that record many times subsequently in the future years. But it was very exciting to do that piece in 97, and we have just have kind of grown with them ever since. Where do you get the inspiration to create all your beautiful pieces? from we start with ideas and names and anything that we see it just it just kind of pops up but when we shop and generally Jong and Gina and I do the shopping at the markets and we do about a week and it literally is shop till you drop because you are exhausted every day I mean you are dead tired exhausted walking what do we walk five or ten miles a day he's shaking his head yeah I'll give you a look look huh? I'm sorry and almost no sleep. <laughs> it's just true. We were long days. We're exhausted. But we just walk the markets and we, you know, we all have good eyes and we just keep looking and we walk fast. We have to go through this and it's crowded. But we find gorgeous fabrics such as that gorgeous tapestry fabric that's on this guy here. You know, you find good things off of them. So a lot of times it's just finding gorgeous stuff, fabrics, trims, detailings, millinery things. And from there, we can build things from it. It's when you work with good elements, when you work with good people that are talented, and it's not just us. I'm not going to just pat all of us on the back. It's the whole team that helps us put it all together, it really works out. So that's really where we get the inspiration from it. Next question. I've been alluding to this all day long. Would love to see some elves in the Rococo style. So this question came from Belgium. And while I knew what the answer was, I knew I had to look it up also and be, clarify it because to me Rococo is like uh, not quite as detailed as Baroque. So it's Baroque light basically. But I'm going to read this to you. Rococo style is characterized by elaborate ornamentation, asymmetrical values, pastel color palette, 
and curved or serpentine lines. Well, Zhang draws curved and serpentine lines all the time. He just is exquisitely elegant with that. Rococo art works often, or, excuse me, Rococo artworks often depict themes of love, classical myths, youth, and playfulness. So those myths we are all in favor of. The, the, the myth that we're all youthful and playful and everything, I'll take that any day. So yes is the answer to that. And that's, it was actually a great question that came from Belgium because the elves we tend to do a little bit more woodsy and more different look to them, but we should do some that have a kind of Rococo style to them. That would be a great look to freshen them up a little bit. Two last questions. Is there an authorized repair center for fairies? We don't do that here anymore. We don't have the capacity to. So I have to think of it as, you know, a old clothes, car, our phones. Sometimes they just go, go, you know, and we can't have them forever necessarily. We can try to. Things happen, I understand that. But if something breaks, a hand breaks or something, hot glue a pick or something into it to do that because we really don't have the capacity to do that anymore here. I think, Trudy, you asked when Christmas catalogs will be sent out. My goodness, I'm going to make you come out here and help us stuff catalogs, like all 50,000 of them. Uh, around Labor Day is when we'll send the catalogs out. That's about when we do them. Got two last things. I have a minute left, and we're going to go into a fraction of overtime. I do want to thank the retailers who participated in today's event, and there were eight of them, and I've got to read them off again. William Glenn in Sacramento, California. These are all retailers that you are supporting when you go to the marketplace. That right on the screen there on the bottom, mark, robertsmarketplace.com, you're going to their stores through my marketplace. So William Glenn in Sacramento, California, you're supporting. Wreaths for Joy in Volant, Pennsylvania. Holiday House Interiors in Montrose, California. Walton Florist and Gifts, they're in Walton, Kentucky. Holidays and Gifts, I just saw them at market. They're in Plano, Texas. Chris Kringle, great store up in Leavenworth, Washington. It's hot up there right now. Bacchus House in Folsom, California. What a great place to see some great Mark Roberts displays. Eric's a great guy there. And Seasons by Rosalba in Laredo, Texas. Rosalba's very talented. I know she does a lot of great, I saw she did a great uh, Facebook Live lighting trees. These are all really good retailers that are very attentive to your needs and our needs, so I hope you can support them whenever you can. You are supporting them when you go to the markrobertsmarketplace.com. Last thing, I said we would do one other thing in all these things, is tell me something I don't already know. So here it is. So the retailers that are watching, you're getting something new right now. If I can do this, John, great. So we have done the last couple years a jeweled ornament. This is an 8-inch ornament. Let's see, I'm going to go the right way. Okay, an 8-inch jeweled Santa ornament. Is that exquisite or what? That was two years ago. This year, we did a jeweled nutcracker ornament. And look at how, this is 8 inches. This is very substantial. Look at all the gorgeous jeweling on there. Blue looks wonderful. So these are almost all sold out. But we've been talking, what are we going to do for next year? Well, here's your, the retailers know this that are watching are hearing about it for the very first time. You guys are hearing it first. We are going to start the 12 days of Christmas. This is about eight inches in scale. Jong and I sat and talked about what we were gonna do for it and how to do it. And we decided we wanted to do something that was, we didn't use the word, but we're gonna use it now, kind of a Rococo style, with the flowing movement of the acanthus leaves. And we're gonna jewel it. And this is a first sketch or a first drawing. Jong drew this by hand on the computer. This is his hand that drew this. He's really talented, uh, and so I'm always impressed. Doesn't matter, I've seen his drawings for 20 years and I'm always still impressed. This is the first drawing. There will be many more iterations of it until we get it to where we're completely happy with it. But I wanna show you, I'm gonna flip this around and show you the second version of it. And what I asked him, I said, you know what, let's, let's emphasize some more color. Let's put a bigger bow in there, please, because I like the bows and I wanted to see more red in there. And Jong suggested, let's put the, the partridge, let's make this partridge a little bit larger. And you know, we're talking about putting maybe a bow and a jewel at the top. This is only the second iteration of it. The partridge still, we gotta work on the color. This will be shiny gold, and glitter gold. There's gonna be some diamonds. You can see those lines where the diamonds are gonna go and such. These are going to be expensive. They will come in those gorgeous Mark Roberts gift boxes. They're probably gonna be around a $100 ornament. They're gonna be very expensive. 
but they're heirloom quality ornaments. They're very special, as have the other, like the Nutcracker ones we did this year, um, were very, very popular and are nearly sold out already. At least they're sold out in my warehouse. Uh, so the stores will still have them for a while, but just gorgeous pieces. We'll probably do three ornaments a year, so this will become a four-year collection, a four-year run with the 12 Days of Christmas jeweled ornaments. It'll be part of the King's Jewel Ornament Collection. And I've told you something that you didn't know. This was a lot of fun. It was very fast. John was not with us today. If John, if you're watching, we sure missed you today. John did the camera today, did a great job. I'm very happy. Thank you for directing me and there were some bumps, but he was directing me and cameraing at the same time. So he was pointing and you know, we were kind of doing all that stuff. So thanks to the retailers. Thank you all. One last thing, August 12th, which which will you want? I hope we have some witches, at least the samples, that we can show you in the, in the, in the show. It'll be fall. It'll be pumpkins, witches, skeletons, and other things. I'll still have some stuff for you, but we'll do a fall show August 12th. Same time. Thank you very much. Brian, are we ready to cut it? We're very good. Thank you so much, and voila.